What's up everybody, Pumpkin here. So I have six new cards for you guys today and one new syndicate leader. Yes, we got a leader today from Slamma himself. So starting right off the bat, we have a seven provision crime card for syndicate. Uh, it's an epic force two adjacent enemies to duel each other. So uh, this is similar to an old Gwent card that we used to have, Yorvith uh, Meditation. Um, the card saw a lot of play. Uh, granted, it was any two units on the board. Uh, this is specifically to adjacent enemies. Um, so this is similar to cards like Treason and Red Haze. Both of those cards, you hit, uh, you do the value of the card that you select to uh, an adjacent unit. Um, whereas this, they actually duel. So it, it's, it's slightly different. Um, if your opponent's units are higher, uh, you'll get more value out of this card, typically. Um, there's a couple problems wrong with this card, though. Um one, your opponent can play around it. Uh, in a meta where Treason was really popular, where you damage adjacent units by the middle unit's uh, strength, uh, everyone played around it, right? If you queue into Ardol, you probably play around this card because for the most part, you know that they're going to run that card. Uh, so playing around it is fairly easy. Um, sometimes you forget, but for the most part, it's, it's, it's pretty manageable. Um, yeah, you could play like Strays and move cards around to set things up, but it's too gimmicky. You're better off just playing a better card. Um, yeah, if this was forced to adjacent, sorry, if this was forced to enemy units on a road to duel each other, okay, now we're talking, I'd play the card, uh, because you have a lot more flexibility and you could actually set that up. But the fact that your opponent, like, even if you set up, uh, two units with strays, they can just play a unit in between and yeah. So it's too easy to, to disrupt if you're trying to force it, um, you basically have to rely on your opponent giving you good value for this card. So I don't think it'll see much play. The only reason it would see play is there's a lot of tall monsters and it's just all the units are big. So it doesn't really matter if they play around it because every combination is just good. Um, and that might be the case. Maybe big monsters is super, super strong next patch. Who knows? We'll see. Um, but right off the bat, it seems a little underwhelming. Uh, seems gimmicky. There's probably better cards to run. Uh, I don't think it'll see too much play. Uh, do note, it's good against shield and R, uh, because if your opponent has two shielded units next to each other, uh, they'll knock off each other's shield before hitting each other. Um, so against like a shield and R deck, it's, it's, it's a little better, I guess. Um, but I, I don't think you can bank on that. So eh, if I had to rate this out of like five stars or something, I'd probably give it like a two. Uh, it might see a little bit of play. Um, in a very specific tall meta, it'll see some play. Uh, otherwise, there are going to be better cards. Moving along, we have another crime card for Syndicate. This card is four provisions. Destroy an enemy artifact. If there are none, gain three crowns. So we have a similar neutral card. Uh, it's a bomb card. It's five provisions, deal three damage, um, or remove an artifact. So yeah, this is basically that, except it's four provisions. Um... Yes, you can make the argument that dealing three damage is better than three crowns. Um, but the problem is the difference between five provisions and four provisions is huge. Um, this is the type of tech card that you just auto include into your deck. If there's any kind of AQ or summoning circle or I, I guess uh, swarm syndicate, because it's really it's a really cheap tech, right? The idea is if you queue into AQ or you queue into Swarm Syndicate or you queue into, I don't know, Eldane, uh, you keep the card in your hand and it gets great value. If you don't queue into those, you just mulligan it away. It's just mulligan fodder. It'd be the equivalent of if you had a four provision bronze that you don't want to keep in your hand, you just mulligan it away, right? This does exactly that. Uh, and if you do top deck it or like it, you hit it off the top after a mulligan, eh, I mean, you're playing a deck that utilizes crowns, so three crowns is fine. Um, yeah, it's a good card. It'll see play. Uh, the only scenario where this card does not see play is if nobody is running artifacts. Um, unless Summoning Circle gets nerfed, that's not going to be the case. So as long as Summoning Circle doesn't get nerfed, artifacts will always see play, uh, and this card will see play. This is a great card for Syndicate. Uh, whether you run one or two of is dependent on the meta, obviously, but yes, this is a very good card. Moving along, we have... I don't, I don't know how you pronounce this. The, the spelling is I-M-K-E. It's like Imke, M-K, M-K. I don't know. I don't know how to pronounce the name. I don't know how to pronounce anything. Anyways, nine provisions, five strength, legendary. 
uh, range every turn, end, gain two coins, fee three, gain shield. So right off the bat, you play this on your ranged row, uh, assuming it doesn't get incinerating trapped or pitfall trapped, uh, it'll go off, you'll get two coins. So worst, worst case scenario, you're getting seven for nine. Yeah, that's not bad, especially because you start gaining two every turn. Uh, two, two is a considerable amount. That's worth roughly two provisions. Um, if this gets left unchecked, you're probably in a very good spot to win the game, if not win the game. Um, but once again, like I talked about earlier with one of the, the Resilience Syndicate card, muzzles can be popular. So this is a muzzle card. Uh, shield isn't going to block muzzle. So on the flip side, if you run enough engines, uh, they can only muzzle one card unless they're playing Francesca. So if you're running enough engines, I guess it's fine because one gets muzzled, the rest stick. So with that in mind, yeah, I think this is a good card because they can play multiple cards that uh, can get muzzled. So one gets muzzled, the other stick. Uh, I do think this card will see play. Gaining two crowns a turn is quite powerful. Uh, it is ranged, which means it has a similar, it, like, it's row locked, right? If your opponent plays a Dragoon or a Bruver or any kind of movement, uh, it moves row and that kind of sucks. But the effect is really strong, so I, it's it's understandable. Uh, now, the Fee 3 gains shield. Um, I like this on the card. I think it's a little too expensive. Honestly, I think it should be 2. Uh, my guess is the reason why it's 3 is because the card is, like, <laughs> if it doesn't get removed, it's so good. So I, I guess the extra protection is going to be costly because the, the payoff is there. Um, granted... Gaining a shield against muzzle doesn't do anything. Uh, gaining a shield against lock doesn't do anything. Gaining a shield against movement doesn't do anything. So the only time the shield actually matters is if your opponent is doing five damage out of hand, right? Um, so for a deck like Croc or Ethne, this is an issue. They use their leader power, uh, and then they go ahead and do their five damage anyways. So it's going to be the case where you're going to have to determine whether or not that shield is worth it. Uh, if you're playing against something like I don't know, Nilfgaard. Uh, <laughs> granted, they have locks, but let's let's just say you you know that they have no more locks. They've played Letho, they've played Ox, and they've played two calves. They have no more locks, right? This shield might actually be worth it because, well, otherwise they'll have to do five damage to it, and Nilfgaard doesn't really have access to one-point pings, so this will just stick. Maybe you're playing against Northern Realms, uh, and they don't have an Arbalist or any other engine that pings for one. You could probably just play this uh, and give it a shield because... The odds of them doing five damage out of hand are pretty slim. Um, they need muzzle, basically, and Northern Elms doesn't really run muzzle. So, yeah, I like the card. I like the fact that you can gain shield. Um, there'll be some cases where it is necessary. I think more often than not, you probably won't give it shield uh, if you think about what your opponent's running um, because blowing fee three feels pretty bad if it just gets locked or moved. So, uh, like, if you're playing against Squaytail, you're probably not going to give it a shield unless they've blown four Ethne pings, in which case, yeah, it might be correct if they've blown, like, Muzzle earlier on um, and they're not playing, like, more in or soon. So, yeah, I like the card. Uh, the upside is definitely there. Two, two coins a turn is a lot. Uh, <laughs> I'm trying to think of another engine that gets two a turn. Not many. I mean, they, they, so like in SK, there are engines that you can set up. So like Sucrose plus a, a card plus Priest is a setup for two, but that, that's multiple cards. So I'm not really thinking, I, I can't really think of a card that gets two per turn. I'm sure there is one, um, but it's like lower HP or whatever. It's a good card. It will see play. Moving along, I, I don't, I don't want to spend too much time on these cards. Uh, this is another dual card. So we saw Sucrose earlier on for SK. Uh, it was a pirate. Uh, this is another pirate. Uh, so this is eight strength. Or sorry, eight provisions, uh, five strength. Deploy melee, boost all allied pirates by one. Deploy range, boost all allied ships by one. Uh, so we have another card that's similar to this uh, already in SK. Basically, whenever you play a ship or play a pirate, it does something. I'm forgetting the name. It's uh, eight provisions, six strength, whatever. Uh, it's a really good card in a pirate ship deck. Uh, the problem with that deck was there weren't a lot of pirates and ships. So like the, the synergy existed, but there wasn't enough of it. Um, this obviously helps the deck. So is this card good? Well, I mean, if you want to break even, you have to hit three. I think earlier I looked on stream, there's like six decent pirates, like four decent ships or five with the one that we're going to be showing right after this. So eh, there's, a, there's a moderate amount. Um, 
Will people play this deck? Sure, people will probably play this deck because it's kind of cool. Uh, most SK decks are pretty straightforward. This one, a little more fun, a little more synergistic instead of just like point slamming or uh, uh, what's it called? Like wounding archetype, I guess you want to call it. Um, so yeah, I think this card will see play. Uh, this is a 100% auto include deck or card in any kind of pirate or ship deck. Uh, that That's pretty obvious. But the question you have to ask yourself is, Will this deck be better than any of the existing SK decks like Harold or Svalblood? And the answer is probably not. Um, because in both of those cases, you can play cards and they're, like, they have synergy with each other, but they don't fall apart if they don't have the other uh, portion of the combo, right? So like there's an ideal combo for two card, but it's not the end of the world. So like if you're playing Olaf and you don't draw Nut, it's not the end of the world because you have other cards to damage it. Uh, whereas if you draw Nut, but you have, I don't know, a totem, you can ping off one of your fanatics or you can, yeah, th th there's other ways to do it. Um, you can ping one of your priests that's at like 10 strength to play around tall removal, right? There, there, there's a lot of flexibility there. Whereas this, uh, you you, you want to draw this in like a long round, right? This card's not great in the short round. So yes, this card will see a lot of play in pirate decks. And by a lot, I mean 100% inclusion rate. Will a pirate ship SK deck be better than Harold and Svalblood? I have my doubts, but eh, I would love to be wrong. Uh, this is the type of the card that you get in a pack and you go oh well maybe in the future so i think this card will shine in maybe like an expansion or two when we get some more pirates um maybe it's just good enough maybe pirate sk is just gonna be crazy good um it's kind of hard to tell because right now pirate sk is just bad because there's not enough cards is this enough to push it three new cards doubtful we'll see time will tell so uh, i don't really know how to rate this card because it's dependent on whether or not the deck is good enough will this carry the deck i wouldn't say it will carry the deck i think it's a good card um in that deck but yeah we'll see i people will try it and then people will realize other sk decks are better and they'll play the other sk decks However, while we are on the topic of pirates and ships, uh, we got a new ship. Uh, this is another syndicate card. Oh, I should say, I should, I didn't really talk about this. So yes, this is a dual card. Yes, this can be played in syndicate and SK. Um, I feel like a lot of the dual cards that are being released are more geared towards the specific faction that they're in, more so than syndicate. Um, I could be completely wrong. There could be a ton of pirates in syndicate and this card could be absolutely insane. I have no idea. Um, yeah, so we're really basing this around SK. Will this card see play in Syndicate? <laughs> I have no idea. We'll, we'll have to see. Um, maybe there's like 10 different pirates, in which case this card's great. Maybe there's two pirates, in which case this card sucks. I don't know. We'll have to see. Uh, but yes, next card is another dual card for SK. It is a ship. Uh, deploy range boost and allied unit by one for each pirate in your hand. So this is similar to like uh, Vanguard, Doppler... Uh, Vendor Elite in Nilfgaard with uh, Tactics. So it has that kind of ability. It's a little worse because all of those examples that I just gave are proactive plays. You can immediately turn one, uh, play it. You don't need anything on the board, whereas this needs something on the board uh, for it to boost, which is strictly worse, um, uh, unless you're boosting an engine. So if you're playing, uh, I don't know, the... Six provisions, four strength, boat every time your opponent plays a unit, pings for one. If you play that first and your opponent doesn't remove it or they, like, deal some damage to it and you boost it up, like, that's, that's pretty good. So I guess uh, keeping some of your engines is alive, that's not bad. So, yeah, maybe maybe it's slightly better uh, in that very specific case. Um, will this card see play? Well, similarly to the last card, it's auto-include in every pirate ship SK deck because it's a ship and that deck needs ships. So, yeah, this card will see play in that deck. Uh, once again, this card has the same problem with the last card. Uh, is that deck better than the existing SK decks? And the answer is probably not. It might be good down the road, but as of now, three new cards. I don't think it's enough to push it unless Sucrose is just like absolutely insane and just like solo carries it and like the other 24 cards in your deck don't really matter. In which case, yeah, I guess it's good enough. Um, but yeah, we'll see. Moving along, we have uh, a Syndicate card. This is five provisions, three strength. Deploy Horde for summon a copy of this unit from your deck to this row. Uh, so this is a tutor card. Um, 
similar stat line and provision cost to riders in monsters. Uh, monsters, you need to have tallest unit, dominance. This one, you need Horde 4. So for those of you who might not remember, Horde 4 means you need to have four coins uh, attached to your leader. If you have three coins and you play this, nothing will happen. If you have four or more coins, uh, it'll pull out the other unit. So you never want to like turn one this uh, unless you leader before doing so. Um, do note, Horde doesn't actually uh, spend any coins. So unlike Fee, right, if you are at four coins and you have a Fee 2, uh, you go from four coins to two coins, right, when you use that Fee 2. Horde 4, it's just a requirement. It doesn't spend it. So when you play this, you don't lose four coins. Uh, you just, you get the bonus effect. Will this card see play? Yeah, it will see play. Um, Brigades in Nilfgaard is three for six provision. Um, this is three for five, which is strictly better. Granted, this has a requirement. The requ requirement for Brigades and Nilfgaard is don't play it on the range row, right? So, like, it always goes off on the melee row unless you row cap. And if you row cap, that's kind of your fault for not paying attention. Um, yeah, this card will see play because uh, it's a Riders with a easier condition. Easier in the sense that your opponent can't play around it. So, Riders, if you lose coin flip and your opponent leads with high um, strength plays... Uh, it might be hard to catch up and gain dominance again, whereas this, your opponent can't interact with coins, so it's up to you. Uh, you're, you're not sure whether or not you can pull it off, or sorry, you won't be unsure if you can pull it off or not. You will know, uh, assuming you can look at your hand and gauge how many coins you're willing to put on to your leader. Uh, so yes, this card will see play. Is it auto include in every deck? If you can easily get coins, yes, it is auto include in every deck because it's thinning and thinning is good. And the requirement, is, if it was like Horde 6, I would say probably not. Uh, 6 is a lot. 4, 4 is doable. 4 is doable. You can do that in one card. Um, yeah, this card will see a lot of play. Moving along to our last card. It's technically not a card. It's a leader. Uh, this leader is the first leader to be shown. Uh, it came out today or yesterday or whenever. Um uh 15 provisions order gain nine crowns and boost an allied unit by any excess amount gain excess means um for those of you who don't know uh you can only have nine crowns attached to your leader uh if you have more than that well you can't you can't go over nine so the idea is let's say you're at three crowns and you play this uh you would go to 12 crowns well you're three over the cap so you would boost a unit on the board by plus three um so the idea is you're always getting nine value or nine points if you count a crown as a point. Um, this is really good with horde mechanics. Uh, if you have horde, I mean, the, the the card we last talked about has horde four, so if you really wanted to, you could play this turn one and then immediately have that horde, and you could immediately play that card. Um, maybe there are other horde cards in the future that are horde five, seven, nine. Horde nine would be pretty expensive, but if there was a horde nine card, this leader would be pretty good with it, right? Because you immediately get that horde nine on the same turn that you play the horde card. So um, will this leader see play? I don't know. Uh, so typically when it comes to leaders, um, the way you evaluate a leader is by basing it on other leaders in that faction, right? New leader comes out in Skoyata. Well, I have other leaders to compare it to. Does it do things better than other leaders? Does it push a certain archetype? Um, whereas this leader, well, it pushes the crown archetype, sure, but I'm pretty sure most leaders probably work with crown as, like, the entire faction of uh, Syndicate. Like, the majority of the cards that have been released so far somewhat work with crowns. So my guess is most of the cards work with crowns in some way or another, um, or different crown mechanics in the decks or faction. So does this push an archetype? Um, I guess it pu pushes the horde archetype because it easily allows you to get those crowns. Um but yeah, it, it's really hard to say whether or not this leader will see play because, I don't know, I don't have anything to compare to. Um, the next leader that gets shown at some point, I'll compare it to this and I will give my opinion on which is better. Um, but yeah, it, it, it's really hard to say because we don't know. Maybe there's a card that needs nine crowns and you just win the game, in which case this leader is really, really good. Maybe there's a two card combo where you need five crowns and then four crowns and this leader is really, really good. Maybe you need to boost a unit on your board by nine points and you need to get to nine crowns and then you play this leader and you boost that unit by plus nine. I don't know. Uh, it, it all depends <laughs> on the upcoming cards and the other leaders. Um, 15 provisions is about even uh, in terms of provisions. So like it's not on the low side, it's not on the high side. 
right in the middle. So, yeah. I, I, I can't really discuss any more about the leader just because I don't know what the other leaders are. So, it's hard to compare to. So, uh, yeah. Uh, that's all I have for you guys today. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know what you guys think of these six cards and one leader. And I'll see you guys on the next video.